My policy is based on uh, on scenario three, uh, what to do in a workplace when we have a pool of applicants of uh, body modifications, piercings, tattoos, outlandish hair colors, things like that. Um, and so my paper was on professional appearance uh, and the importance of that and the effects of it. And the employee dress code policy's purpose is to set a foundation for how we'll present ourselves to prospective customers, clients, guests, and fellow employees, and to emulate a positive atmosphere that embodies traits of like discipline and preparedness and respect. Uh, and we can do that through, you know, through our professional appearance, through what we're wearing. Um, and so the scope of this goes to all employees. There's no exceptions to that. Um, and the policies are as follows. All employees must be clean and well-groomed. All clothes must be business casual. No workout clothes or casual wear. So essentially business casual would be like slacks, um, a button up or like a polo, something like that. Professional wear attire. All clothes must be, um, clothes must be uh, project professionalism. So they can't have like inappropriate labels or writing or images uh, like nudity, things like that. Um, <clears throat> clothes must be clean and in good shape as well. There can't be holes and tears in your clothing or uh, some people have like mark markings on them from like a marker or something. Can't have any of that. Tattoos must abide by keeping a professional appearance. Uh, for example, face tattoos, nudity shown or violence depicted. Uh, that's not professional and therefore it's not permissible. Tattoos on the outer extremities of the body. So your arm, hands, things like that. Um, they have to be reviewed for appropriateness under the above guidelines of like, does it, does it show nudity, violence? Uh, is it professional? Um, and if it's deemed inappropriate, then it just needs to be covered uh, during the duration of work. Tattoo coverings must abide by audience guidelines so there can't be like any inappropriate art or designs or anything that would detract or take away from uh your customer interaction and relationship uh with that covering um so a bold solid color like white gray or black would be recommended no piercings are permitted apart from earrings that would abide with the professional appearance or your outfit essentially uh and could be no bigger than two inches in diameter uh, no crazy hairstyles or colors. Natural hair is preferred, um, such as colors like base, colors like blonde, brown, gr uh, black, gray, white. Um, no other colors or styles uh, unnatural to your head or body are permissible. All employees must maintain proper hygiene. Um, no bad or overwhelming body odors that distract or dissuade an individual from speaking with you, which includes like dental hygiene uh, as well. Cosmetics such as lipsticks um, and things like that should be conclusive with professional appearance and not distract or take away from the customer relations. Um, so you don't want something, you know, too vibrant or something that really is going to draw away from, from the customer's uh, concern or the conversation at hand. And then footwear must be closed toes, so no heels, sandals, sliders, or any other footwear outside of normal uh, footwear is permitted and that's for uh, <clears throat> safety reasons and i used uh nurses military and like police officers as examples of those who illustrate or demonstrate professionalism or their appearance uh by what they wear uh, and through doing that the hope would be that they would be able to <clears throat> emulate an atmosphere that shows that they're prepared um, and that they're uh, obviously going to gain respect. There's a, in my paper, there's an article that talks about police officers in the community and in particular about how, why police officers dress the way they do as far as their, their uniform. Some of them, a lot of them have body cameras now and then they also have like identification, but they also have their belt with their tactical gear, like flashlight or um, gun, taser, things like that. Um, and it, it one of the things uh, in, in the paper it showed was tattoo piercings and body modifications. Oftentimes the community members would relate that to like gang members or gang affiliation. And so it was really important that police officers, for example, were in uniform and didn't have those type of modifications or tattoos visibly shown to the public because that can be a mistaken, it could be mistaken or taken the wrong way, especially in communities and cities with high crime or with an influx of like officer, uh, officer and community relations. Um, and so that was an, that was an interesting thing. And it also talked about how when, when officers were dressed properly, 
Uh, it demonstrated that they were obviously prepared for the situation at hand. Uh, they exerted discipline through their, you know, their uniform and their structure and how they carried themselves. Um, and then also got the respect of the community members. And so it just goes to show that like the first line of communication in all of this is uh, your appearance and how you act, what you do prior to showing up to work makes a big difference because that projects an appearance to others in which they perceive. Um, and so that is why I chose this dress code policy uh, in the hopes that it would uh, influence and persuade good and positive traits like respect, preparedness, discipline, things like that.